in the not-so-distant future, Earth is in dire straits. Climate change, deforestation, and a devastating nuclear war have wreaked havoc worldwide. Most cities are crumbling, facing a trifecta of problems, of power shortages, food scarcity, and a perilous lack of oxygen. Fast forward to the year 2067, and Australia stands as one of the last bastions of civilization. The city clings to survival, sustained by synthetic oxygen. Unfortunately, this oxygen is tainted, leading to a widespread ailment known as the sickness. Our protagonist, Ethan White, and his best friend Jude work as utility workers. Their job involves maintaining the stability of a neutral reactor to ensure the city's power supply. Post their arduous workday, a mandatory health check awaits to confirm everyone's well-being. When a colleague can't make it the next day, Ethan, driven by the need for extra oxygen credits, steps in to cover the shift. Despite his noble intentions, the boss terminates the unfortunate worker. On his way home, Ethan encounters a protester advocating for the right to oxygen and urging sacrifices for future generations. Amidst the indifferent crowd, the fired worker confronts Ethan, desperate to do his children suffering from the sickness. Tensions rise, but a sudden incident steals the spotlight as the protester spontaneously combusts. Back home, Ethan learns from the news that the fiery act commemorated the death of the last living plant, with reports highlighting the escalating sickness-related deaths and promises of a solution from Chronicorp, the oxygen-producing company. The report takes a personal turn when it reveals the demise of Ethan's father, Richard, Corona Corp's lead scientist. Distraught, Ethan turns off the TV. His wife, Xanthi, arrives and emits their moments together. She unexpectedly vomits blood, an alarming sign of the sickness. Despite reassurances, the situation is grim. Soon after, Ethan and Jude are summoned to Corona Corp by Regina, the chief technology officer. She discloses a secret project, a time machine named the Chronicle, invented by Ethan's father two decades ago. The team believes that people from the future have the cure for the sickness and that they've specifically requested Ethan's presence. However, the challenge lies in figuring out how to bring him back from the future. Ethan grapples with Regina's request at a bar with Jude. His reluctance to leave Xanthi clashes with the possibility of saving her and countless others. Jude invokes the memory of Richard, who disappeared, leaving eight-year-old Ethan with a cryptic device and a note. Ethan, determined not to replicate his father's actions, is torn. Jude argues that to be unlike Richard, Ethan must embark on this journey to save Xanthi. As Jude departs, Ethan reflects on his eighth birthday, a poignant moment with his father. Richard gave him a mysterious box, setting the stage for a crucial decision. An electronic bracelet clamping around young Ethan's wrist left a lasting mark symbolizing the weight of choices and the legacy passed down. As a boy cries out in pain, Richard, a character in the tale, tells him that a bracelet won't come off. Richard then leaves the house, ignoring protests from his wife. Later, Ethan, another character, recalls the pain of losing his mother. He decides to go home and share Chronic Corp's plan with his wife, Xanthi. Ethan is hesitant to leave her, but Xanthi encourages him not to use her as an excuse and to have faith in saving humanity. Xanthi expresses her fear, mentioning the deaths of kids in her class due to a mysterious illness known as the sickness. That evening, Ethan goes to the roof, attempting to remove the bracelet while recalling the day his mother died on the streets. He remembers Jude, his friend, sharing an oxygen mask with him on that difficult day. In the present, Ethan screams as he makes a crucial decision. The next morning, Ethan leaves a metal flower for Xanthi with a promise to return. Unbeknownst to him, Xanthi is awake and crying. Upon reaching the Chronicops office, Ethan strikes a deal with Regina. He agrees to go into the future only if Xanthi receives the first dose of the cure. Regina accepts, and they head to the lab. Scientists explain how to use a special suit and a small computer called Archie. Jude arrives to show support and promises to watch over Xanthi. Prepared in his suit, Ethan steps into the Chronicle time machine, and electricity envelops him. The machine propels him into the future, and he lands in a rainforest, feigning upon impact. Upon waking, Ethan realizes his suit is burning and removes it just before it explodes. Adjusting to the sunlight and clean air, he observes vegetation regrown in the area. Using Archie, he attempts to check his location but finds no satellite connection. Releasing a magnet into the ground, Archie senses nearby strictures, guiding Ethan to the closest facility. At the entrance, Ethan discovers a skeleton wearing a suit with his name. Shockingly, the skeleton wears Richard's bracelet with a green light, signaling the wearer's impending demise. Panicked, Ethan calms down and tries unsuccessfully to open the facility's doors. 
Instead, he asks the wristed Archie to play the last recording, revealing voices arguing and again shot before the battery dies. Ethan notices a wire wrapped around the wristed Archie and replicates it with his own, enabling her to detect a beacon signal. Following the signal, he finds oxygen dispensers but no people. In the evening, Ethan starts a fire with Archie's help and attempts to identify berries. Discovering they taste awful, he moves on to use constellations to confirm the year 2474, reminiscing about stargazing with Richard. However, the memory abruptly ends with Richard feeling sick and hallucinating during a thunderstorm. As Ethan watches a bright light crash under his camp, his hallucinations intensify, making him believe a man is rushing to stab him in the chest. He loses consciousness, but when he wakes up, he discovers the mysterious figure is actually Jude, his friend. Jude injected him with medicine to counteract the poison from the berries Ethan had eaten. The following morning, Jude explains that Krona Corp, the company tracking Ethan's health, noticed he was in critical condition. They used the last bit of power in the Chronicle, a time travel device, to send Jude for assistance. Ethan shows Jude the skeleton he found, thinking it might be him, but Jude is skeptical. Using Archie, a small computer, they continue tracking the signal and locate another facility. The facility scans Ethan's eye, opens its door, and reveals a dark interior with a glowing screen displaying Ethan's name. Pressing enter activates the bracelet on his wrist, which extracts blood for DNA analysis. Worried they might be under attack, Jude reveals he brought a gun. When the bracelet's light turns green, indicating Ethan's identity, the computer illuminates the room. To their surprise, they are in Krona Corp's lab. The computer announces that the portal will open in four hours. Jude is relieved, but Ethan becomes concerned because his bracelet is the same green color as the skeleton's. Ethan checks the computer logs and finds a holographic recording by his father, Richard. Richard explains that they buried a monitoring station to send data from the future when the air became breathable. In the next entry, the team anticipated a reply from 2474, receiving the words, Send Ethan White. The report revealed a power problem in 2474, causing the lab system to go offline. Ethan, using Archie, diagnoses a corrupted power feed, making it impossible to return to 2067. The computer warns of a nuclear explosion if the issue isn't fixed before the countdown ends. Jude searches for tools while Ethan reflects on the implications. Chronicorp knew about the power failure but didn't inform them. They fixed the lab and found a cure, raising questions about why Chronicorp sent Jude instead of a medic. Jude insists on repairing the power issue immediately, prompting Ethan to suggest analyzing their situation first. Their disagreement becomes tense, but they agree to work on repairs and later search for the message sender. The duo reverses the forest and heads to the city, discovering it in ruins and overgrown with vegetation. Exploring the area, they find numerous skeletons, leading Ethan to realize that nobody survived the year he came from. The Earth seemed to be waiting for humans to disappear before healing itself. Anxious, they visit Sand's school and discover the students' skeletons in the classroom, indicating they died there. With nobody around to move the bodies, Ethan worries they might fail their mission. To his heartbreak, he finds Zan's skeleton with the metal flower in her hand. Overwhelmed by grief, Ethan recalls the night Richard, his father, called them to meet but was followed by a stranger who killed Ethan's mother and stole his oxygen mask. Richard never showed up, but Jude found and saved Ethan. The painful memory triggers a panic attack in Ethan, but Jude helps him calm down. Ethan regrets leaving Xanthi alone and believes they can't change anything. However, Jude suggests that they are better off now because no one is suffering anymore. These words shock Ethan, as they are the same words from the wristed Archie. Playing the recording again, Ethan realizes the argument concludes with Jude shooting him. Jude, with a gun in hand, confuses Ethan, who questions its purpose when there's nothing to fight. An argument ensues until Archie reminds them of the looming nuclear explosion with only two hours left. Jude drags Ethan to the tunnels, discovering the nuclear core is damaged, requiring a power reroute. Initial attempts fail, and the computer attempts to shut the door for safety. Jude manages to block it, but when Ethan hears about the need for depressurization, he removes the block to save Jude. Ethan activates the oxygen purge, restoring power but causing him to faint. Desperate, Jude breaks the glass, allowing oxygen back inside to keep Ethan alive. They return to the lab, learning they have only 37 minutes before the portal launch. In a surprising discovery, Ethan opens a door leading to his own skeleton, accepting that fate may be unchangeable. While switching Archie batteries, he accuses Jude of planning to shoot him. 
Playing the wrist did Archie recording, Ethan witnesses Jude threatening him with a gun and asking him to fight back. Jude swears he doesn't plan to shoot Ethan, leading to a heated argument with Jude suggesting they stay put. Ethan refuses, unwilling to leave everyone to die. Ethan forces open another door, hoping to find masks in the utility room. Despite Jude's insistence that they can't save everyone, Ethan pushes him away and plays a log recorded on his 8th birthday. In the recording, Richard admits to making a mistake but is interrupted when Jude shuts off the power. Angered, Ethan locks Jude in the utility room and restores the power to finish watching the message. Richard expresses that everything he did was for his son, calling home and asking little Ethan to take a walk with his mother to meet him. Just before Ethan could leave, Regina and Jude showed up in the lab, cornering him. Regina had a plan to use the Chronicle to escape to the future with a chosen group of important people, leaving behind the search for a cure. She argued that humans were the real problem. Richard, Ethan's father, didn't agree and confessed that only Ethan could activate the system in the future. Regina, furious, pulled out a gun and asked a scientist if they could send someone to fix the power issue. When the scientist said it was possible, Regina shot Richard. Jude tried to stop the recording, but it continued, revealing that Regina sent a team to kill Ethan's mother and ordered Jude to be Ethan's guardian. Devastated, Ethan confronted Jude, accusing him of using him all these years. They argued about what to do next. Ethan started pulling cables to stop the Chronicle, and Jude attacked him, pushing him against the wall. Jude begged Ethan to fight back, even aiming his gun at Ethan's head, but Ethan refused, believing in his brother. Overwhelmed with guilt, Jude apologized and chose to self-delete. In the present, Regina prepared the elite group for their escape, ordering a guard to kill Ethan when they reached the future. Meanwhile, Ethan had a breakdown and reached for Jude's hand, snapping out of it when the computer reacted to Regina's team. He realized that he was the one behind everything in the lab. In a clever move, Ethan wrote the Send Ethan White message with a plan. As the countdown reached zero, Regina expected a portal to open, but the Chronicle shut down instead. Inside the machine, they found a gift from Ethan Plants, a can, and a video of Richard's murder. In the future, Ethan destroyed the Chronicle to ensure it would never be used again. Present-day news reported Regina's arrest and how scientists were using the plants for ecological regeneration. A Chronicop employee brought a can to Xanthi, and inside was a real flower. In the future, Ethan buried Jude's body by the river and placed the metal flower on the grave. Suddenly, he spotted a butterfly, remembering his father teaching him that everything in the universe is connected through time. Excited about the potential changes, Ethan hurried back to the facility and discovered his skeleton was gone. Ethan ran through the forest to the city again, finding that humanity had survived and built structures that harmoniously blended with nature.